checking off one of my lifelong dreams. To make it to the championship game, that's an accomplishment in itself, but we're aiming for bigger and better things. You know, we're really excited, but we still see our goal ahead of us. If we just keep playing the way we're playing, we'll come on, on top. I feel like we were born for days like this. One more. We just make one more. Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship, presented by Capital One. And from Dallas, Texas, the Gamecocks and the Bulldogs are moments away from deciding who's best. Now, it's not the final that everybody expected, but it could be a great one, an all-SEC affair, South Carolina and Mississippi State. The Bulldogs had an amazing victory the other night, still flying after one of the most incredible victories in college basketball history, the buzzer beater to shock UConn. The Gamecocks off a comeback win in the national semifinals and about to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Great to have you with us, everyone. Welcome back to Dallas. I'm Dave O'Brien alongside my partners, Kara Lawson and Doris Burke. Holly Rowe joining us in just a moment. I am fascinated to see how Morgan William is going to respond and Mississippi State after that amazing victory the other night because once again, they're up against an outstanding opponent in Asia Wilson. You talk about another Goliath. Vic Schaefer told us, though, the best attribute about his team all year has been their business-like approach. And isn't it fascinating that we've got two head coaches making their debut in the national championship, both programs in the mighty SEC, but neither had traction before these guys arrived. Dawn Staley and Vic Schaefer have established cultures of winning, Kara, and they have won at a high level. Now can they get the ultimate prize and win the national championship? First off, let me welcome you both to SEC country. This feels <laughs> like a fall Saturday in here. It is terrific. The SEC prides itself on its passion, its physical play, and you feel all of that standing here watching the teams warm up. But if you're a player in this moment, right before the biggest game, what do you have to do? Things are really big right now. You've got to try and focus and narrow your focus and make them smaller. The emotions, everything here is tickling your senses as you're playing and you're warming up. So try and make yourself immune to everything that you're feeling right now and lock in. And then as the game changes, and it goes, and there's runs, runs for one team, runs for another team, it's very important that you are able to muster up the courage. And we've seen both teams do this throughout the tournament and try and lead your team to a victory. I can't wait, man. You talk about courage. You talk about size. We talk about Morgan William as we bring in Holly Rowan. And Holly, she's really become, in the last couple of weeks, a bit of a cultural phenomenon, hasn't she? Well, if you don't love Morgan William, you don't have a heart. This little pint-sized baller has been incredible, leading her team to an overtime win with 41 points against Baylor, and then that shot against UConn. But we got to the bottom of just how big is she really, and she insists. I'm 5'5", five five, and when I step onto the court, I am six feet tall. But really, she's about 5'2 and a half, but she does have some other characteristics that help her overcome her size. One, a freakishly long arm span. She's able to get deflections, defend well, and shoot over much taller players. And how about the vertical? It is just enough to get up and over big players. Her team says we don't care how big she is. We know that she has the heart of a lion, and they're on the brink of a championship because of that passion. And just about time for the last women's college basketball game of the season. The national championship. The title will change hands. As we get ready for the anthem, let's go to public address announcer Molly Haynes. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise to honor America and those who support our freedom at home and abroad. This evening's colors are presented by the Marines of the recruiting station Dallas. Tonight's large American flag is being held by the Dallas police officers and the youth from the Dallas community. And now please join 13-year-old Olivia Kay in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see
what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the Well, the building sold out for tonight's national championship. Meanwhile, inside the Mississippi State locker room, here's head coach Vic Schaefer. You have already been in battles that have prepared you for today. You can't be any more ready. You can't be any more ready than you are right now in this moment. There's nothing else we could have done. And so today, we got to have one more. You got one more in you? Yeah. Then we got to go get one more. Look, I'm sick and tired of hearing about the game as one of the biggest upsets in the history of sport. Horse, you know what? We were, we were pretty good that night. We've been pretty good all year long. You know what? We have. This is a pretty good basketball team. I find that offensive. Let's go play. Hey. Well, South Carolina has been the better team head to head, beating Mississippi State both times they met, 64 to 61. That ended Mississippi State's 20 and 0 start. There was controversy at the end of that game with a couple of foul calls. Then in the SEC tournament, Mississippi State only got 49 points. So South Carolina's defense has really made the difference. Time now for tonight's Capital One starting lineups as we go back to public address announcer Molly Haynes. And now let's meet the starting lineups. At guard for Mississippi State, a 5'5 junior from Birmingham, Alabama, number two, Morgan Williams. At guard for South Carolina, 5'6 junior from Bronx, New York, number one, Bianca Cuevas Moore. At guard Mississippi State, a 5'9 senior from Spring, Texas, double zero, Dominique Dillingham. Head guard for South Carolina, 5'10 freshman from Noblesville, Indiana, number 52, Taisha Harris. Mississippi State, a 6'1 junior from Carthage, Mississippi, number 35, Victoria Vivians. At guard for South Carolina, 6'0 junior from Sandersville, Georgia, number 10, Alicia Gray. At forward for Mississippi State, a 6'1 senior from Conyers, Georgia, number three, Brianna Richardson. At guard for South Carolina, 6'2 junior from Sewanee, Georgia, number three, Kayla Davis. 
center for Mississippi State, a 6'7 sophomore from Brennan, Texas. Number 15, Tierra McCowan. And forward for South Carolina, a 6'5 junior from Hopkins, South Carolina. Number 22, Asia Wilson. And introducing the head coaches for Mississippi State, Vic Schaefer. And for South Carolina, Don Staley. That's the third time both teams are from the SEC playing for the championship. The tip is coming up next. William on the drive. Pull up, pull up. The Bulldogs and the Gamecocks coming at you tonight from Dallas. Great to have you alongside. Kara Lawson, Dave O'Brien, Doris Burke, and Holly Rowe for the national championship game. South Carolina at 32 and 4, and Mississippi State coming in with 34 wins. Only four losses, but again, two of those came head to head against the Gamecocks. Tonight will be a different story. Building absolutely packed. And as Kara said, it feels a lot like an SEC football Saturday here in Dallas. Opening tip. Controlled by Mississippi State, and we are underway. William coming off 13 points, six assists, but of course, the biggest shot of her life. Vivian's on the drive. We'll see if she can start to get rolling because Doris, 6 for 18, 19 against UConn, but again, takes a high volume of shots. That is correct, but she's a fearless scorer. It's what she's built to do. And to your point about Morgan William, interesting matchup at the point guard spot. Cuevas Moore is similarly sized and is as quick, so let's watch that develop. How about the first three there? Vivian's lifting from the corner and knocks it down in a nice early sign. Oh, great start. Remember, she hit the first three for Mississippi State in that semifinal versus UConn, so very good start for Vivian. Davis trying to answer that. She had a miserable shooting game, two for 15 in the national semi against Stanford. But she had been cooking coming in. That is correct. And that has mirrored her season. Very up and down for Kayla Davis. The switch in offense from the high low with a healthy Elena coach to a four out one in system has helped Kayla Davis. Up top, Richardson will swing it for Dillingham, who's such an outstanding defender. Shot clock down to three. They then try to give it off and take it away by Wilson. Probably would have been wiser to shoot that inside that lane. And here's Harris to drive the baseline, a block, and a quick foul as Dillingham went for the stuff. And she'll pick up the personal as you look at Don Staley, one of the country's most decorated players, but the one missing piece in her amazing career. She's never won the NCAA championship. Losing three times in the Final Four as a player. I think you could make the case that Dawn is the most important young coach in the country. She has just been named the head coach of the senior national team for the United States of America. And you think about this is the first Final Four since the passing of the great Pat Summit. Who is next on the distaff side to take that torch and set the pace in women's college basketball? I'd say Dawn is a pretty worthy candidate. Think of how many generations Dawn has already impacted. I know for me, growing up in Virginia, she impacted me watching her play at Virginia, playing in the WNBA, playing for the U.S. Olympic team, and now as a coach. So she's impacted multiple generations of women in this country already. Vivian's nice little leader there, five quick points. You better look out now. Victoria Vivian gets cooking. That girl can flat score it. You mentioned it the other night. I mean, in the state of Mississippi, she is a giant star. She scored 5,745 points in high school. That's the all-time record for anyone. 
She's going to walk right into a three, but she can't bury that. Dillingham, a little shove there by Davis. And she'll pick up the foul here in the first quarter. South Carolina foul number three, Kayla Davis, her first team foul number one. You know, Dave, that might have been a heat check for almost any other player for Victoria Vivens. That's called a normal shot. <laughs> <laughs> From about 24 yeah. feet. <laughs> Trying to get out of that in the baseline. Gillingham with it. 5'9", senior out of Spring, Texas. A heart and soul defender, Richardson. That's a nifty feed and an easy two there for McCall. Richardson, I thought, was dynamic on the defensive end against Connecticut. But let's remember, this young woman is a capable scorer. You like her playmaking ability for her teammate there. Well, the bull are sharp at the outset. Wilson's first one. Yes, all net. I love that. that. Just little fade. You see that? That's six seven. She's trying to go over. Very few matchups for Asia Wilson in the country that she is the smaller player. So a nice little fade there to be able to get it up over the outstretched arms of McCowan. Well, in the point guard matchup, that's probably the one to keep your eye on next. Cuevas Moore with a terrific block. You talked about that matchup right away, paying dividends. Cuevas Moore, one of the few players in the country who can stay with William step for step. Nice little weave action for Mississippi State here. Just putting South Carolina in a help position. Asia Wilson has to go help across. Nice little drop pass from Richardson post to post there for the layup. You'll see that similar weave action on yes. both teams. And there's such familiarity. Conference foes. Multiple times they've played this year. And it's interesting. The SEC championship was an impetus for change for Mississippi State. The program built on defense. He said, I had to get better offensively. And they have. Now they weren't scoring at all. Shot clock a factor now down to five. As that one is tipped with six on the shot clock. Big shape now in his fifth year. Put together such a great game plan to defeat UConn. And his team did play great, as he said in the locker room. But it was still one of the great upsets in the history of college basketball. Don't tell the man who swag is <laughs> off the charts right now, all right? Vic Schaefer? No question about it. Denying the Huskies' vaunted passing attack all night long. And he said, our game plan going in was, don't let them play, as he put it, pretty basketball. And he made them uncomfortable all night. He got Connecticut on their heels right away, something you typically see Connecticut do to its, their opponents. What a, an extraordinary effort. And I said going into that game, Dave, somebody had to have a moment. And certainly Morgan William did. But I would make this point. K-Law, that entire team had itself a moment. Up to the rim with four on that shot clock and take it away. So that play fails. Mississippi State looking to add to their lead. They look very comfortable in this setting right off the bat. William trying to swing the pass and knocked away by Asia Wilson. Ravos Moore trying to dish inside for Gray and slapped the out of play. And you know, Gino Oriema is in the house doing a little dancing up there. 11-time national champ, not used to being any place else except on the sideline tonight. Davis with it near midcourt, 6.15 to go in the first quarter. Reversing field flips it, and a blocking foul. You can look at... Kayla Davis right away, Doris, trying to get something going offensively. She doesn't want to wait tonight. Well, she is an elite scorer from the wing, and on the dribble drive rotation a little bit late, yes. and she'll get herself to the free throw line, which maybe can get her started offensively. Richardson picking up her first foul. Davis very good at the line at 80%, and Thursday at 6 Eastern, the Frozen Four gets on in Chicago. Harvard and Minnesota Duluth squaring off in the national semifinals on ESPN2 and watch ESPN and visit NCAA.com the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Well, that play that got Daniel Kayla Daniel Davis Daniel to the free throw line. Daniel I want her to look to attack and do that. You look at her frame and you say this is a player that has the skill and the frame combined that should be able to dominate the game for stretches on the offensive end. So I like the aggressiveness from her early on. Davis hitting the bench. Vivians lifts the jumper off the back of the iron and tips. 
Here comes Gray on the attack. Cuevas Moore will lay it up and in on a terrific drive. Now, if you can play off your defense, we've talked a little about Mississippi State being one of the best defenses in the country. Both of these programs have built the foundation for winning in the culture of their programs by being elite level defenses. Dillingham on the attack. Lang drives in that basket. The 5'9 senior, her first bucket. Only averages about seven per game. Look, look, at her, look at her deny out front, though, Dave. And Cuevas Moore will take the hit. She went in for the lane, 9 7 Mississippi State. And that foul on William, her first. Now, Dominique Dillingham, I want you to consider this about this young woman as we take a look at the backdoor play. A nice job by Cuevas to get there. Shots. William with the slap to put Cuevas Moore to the line. The guard from the Bronx as we bring in Holly Rowe. Holly. Oh, Dave, and there is a little bit of Bronx in her spirit about this matchup tonight with Morgan William, who's been getting a ton of attention. Bianca Cuevas Moore said, hey, she's just another little person. I've got some speed, too. She said what she's really worried about is the big girl. That's Pierre on the screen. Rebound tipped, and Wilson could not get to it. Taken away by McCowan at 6-7. So Dillingham running the point here. Back for Vivian. Richardson determined to get it into a big and a whistle. 4.50 left in the quarter. We'll take the timeout as it is quickly tightened up Mississippi State by one. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by the Quicksilver Card from Capital One. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back. Every purchase, everywhere. I don't want, you know, because you got one more. One more. One more. You got one more. You celebrate, you bring it down, you got one more. But I just want to say, bless you. Keep listening to the staff. Keep listening to your heart. And I have never, I can't remember the last time I did this happen. And this crowd. And that was a great thrill for those kids in that locker room to hear from Mississippi native Robin Roberts. It has been a tough road for these guys. They have a chance to be a very small number of teams to beat three number one seeds to win a national championship. And you know what, Kara, that I found fascinating when we met with Vic Schaefer yesterday? He said the most hyped person in our locker room after that game was actually Robin Roberts. Because Holly Rose said to Vic, how do you turn the page after arguably the greatest upset in women's college basketball history? And remember that just like the United States hockey team that beat Russia and then had to go win the gold medal game, there was more work to be done. And he said, my guys have been businesslike all year, and certainly the start would indicate they are. I've been impressed with their confidence and their belief in each other. And you look at how committed this team is, how connected they are on the defensive end. So this is a surprise to everyone else, but not inside that locker room. They believe they should be here. Gray with a jumper from mid-range off the side of that backboard. That'll trigger a break for Vivians. And quickly got in the offensive fray here. Mississippi State with a 10-8 lead in the first quarter of the national championship game. Holmes now in it. Back up top for Richardson. Shot clock now to nine. Holmes with the ball. Also lightning quick. McCowan will feed Dillingham. She's wide open. Well run play. She was recruited for her competitive spirit. Not her basketball skill. But sometimes you need others to make shots. She's made two. And how about the patience of the big girl McCowan to absorb the double and find the open player. Wilson. Trying to back inside. That's heavy traffic. Made it anyway. Uh, what a play. And they're they're trying to collapse on Asia Wilson, especially on those drives against the not as quick Tierra McCowan. That was a great help defender there with Victoria Vivians, but Asia Wilson just made a spectacular offensive play. 19 rebounds in the national semifinal against Stanford. A very physical affair as McCowan went for it, tapped it away. We asked Asia 
yesterday. What did you ice first? You said, I started with my eye yes. and went down from there. Elbows, knees, rib cage. It was physical. Victor Richardson, she'll fire it too long, and that didn't touch anything. Harris, the handoff in the lane, and finished there by Davis. You like Taisha Harris's presence right now. This is a freshman playing her first national championship game. How about in a full sprint, dribbling the basketball to have the presence of mind to hit Alicia Gray? Holmes on the penetration, beautifully done there. Jasmine Holmes, very quick step for the 5'8 sophomore. 235 left here in the first. Harris again with the kick and a blocking foul on the baseline. Mississippi State by two, and Vic can't watch. On Monday night, Gonzaga and North Carolina square off in the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball National Championship. Coverage on CBS begins at 9 o'clock Eastern. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Richardson picking up foul number two. Well, that's two of your starters with two fouls, Dave. Harris trying to get around Holmes. Easier said than done. Still on the dribble. Gray trying to spin. Fires it up. Nice touch. We've seen the creativity in back-to-back -back possessions by the two lefties. That's Asia Wilson and Alicia Gray, the two players, I think, in this specific game, best equipped to score against Mississippi State's sweltering defense. Tied at 14. McCowan trying to get a little bit closer. Too strong. Harris there for the rebound. Tried to take it in strong, lost it, and out of play it goes off her. So if you're Mississippi State offensively and Wilson is out of the game, every touch needs to be a block touch, or every single time down the court needs to be a block touch. Not off the block, not short corner for McCowan or now a Corey who comes into the basketball game. Challenge Herbert Harrigan, the freshman, who doesn't quite have the size or the strength to push them off their spots. They don't lose a ton of size there. 6-7 goes out, 6-5 comes in. Filling in the open shooter, no. Caps her own miss with terrific hustle there. On the drive, Holmes, no. Herbert Harrigan, the 6-2 freshman with the rebound into the game for the Gamecocks. Outstanding player out of the state of Florida. Here's Davis again. Well, Jasmine Holmes is getting a ton of time here. Nice pass. Jasmine Holmes is getting a ton of time here. This young lady with the basketball coming up the floor played an entirety of one minute against the Connecticut Huskies, but with the two fouls on Morgan Williams, she's in the basketball game. And, you know, this is coaches to intuition, boy, because she got a lot more time in practice handling the basketball and running plays than she did prior to Connecticut. Holmes with a shot clock at five. Swings the pass for Johnson. Great defensive stop there by Gray with the stuff. Pliny and a blocking foul. You wonder about steps before that. No question. I really thought there were steps. I think Vic did too. Whoa, but he got happy feet going to rack. Let's take a look at the play on the other end of the floor. Lefty blocks it with her left. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Kleine at the line. Just a 57% foul shooter. Uh, Morgan Williams, I was incorrect. Just one foul. And Jasmine Holmes still getting a ton of time. Holmes, an outstanding passer for Vic Schaefer. One of his top assist players, despite not starting a game, she's second on the team in assists. Well, she was terrific in their second round win over DePaul. So she's seen time throughout the course of the season. It's just in the last couple games with Morgan William playing as well as she had, she hadn't gotten off the bench that much. South Carolina with their first lead. 
And the whistle is 16.6 to go in the first quarter. South Carolina surviving the loss of four-time All-SEC big Elena Coates to an ankle injury. And around the start of the SEC tournament, gone for good. We've not seen her on their bench or in the stands in any of the tournament against Schaefer fires. A wild shot. That one high off the window. Time to get a shot in the air. Plenty of time. Quelos Moore backs it out. Here's Gray with a leaner. Kind of a wild shot there. And there was a whistle on the play. This is the right call. I definitely thought the block occurred before the buzzer. Gray going on strong there. We're just about ready for the second quarter. Shunda Johnson with her first foul as they go to the monitor. Great clock awareness by Bianca Cuevas right there because you're driving and you pass it to Alicia Gray here as we're going to take a look. And absolutely, to me, that's a block for Shonda Johnson sliding in there. But the clock is going down sometimes that five, four can hurry you up a little bit. She was one on three, two on three, pulled it out and gave Alicia Gray a good look at a drive. So South Carolina with the two point lead. And Alicia Gray getting ready to go to the line here as we're set for the second quarter of the national championship game in Dallas. D. Cantor, the lead official, another national championship for D. You know, you know what's been really good for South Carolina in the latter stage of this first quarter have been running off of misses and oh, pushing yeah. the pace. For sure. Yeah. So they put point five on the clock. This will be two shots for Gray. It's coming up 18 points, eight rebounds against Stanford in 35 outstanding minutes. This young woman has such a knack to me for, as they call it, a silent assassin. She's got a knack for big plays of big moments. I don't mean a bucket, Dave. I might mean a charge taken, a rebound at the appropriate time. Alicia Gray contributes in so many ways. South Carolina pressing, and that's the end of the first, finally. Well, the national championship is at stake. Foes that are familiar with one another. Dawn Staley in her first national championship game, telling her point guard, settle down. The point guard, Morgan Williams, says, my bad. The All-American says, let's go. And Vic Schaefer, the agony of a coach. Welcome back to Dallas here with Mississippi State coach Vic Schaefer and coach you'd plan to go to your bench early and often tonight. How have you been able to use your depth in this first quarter? Well we've used it. I'm not sure it's very good. We got a couple kids with foul trouble and um, they're playing harder than that first group. That's why they're in. They're not playing better but they're playing harder right now. Transition's a problem. Scoring has been hard for your team against South Carolina. What can you do better to score against this good deep, defense? Play harder down there. We got kids walking around on offense, and that's not the end. Of, neither end's the end to do it on against them. But if you're tired, I got to get you out. Thank you, Coach. All right, go down. Yeah, Morgan William only played five minutes, but of course she came up with a shot of shots to shock the world as the newspapers were blaring the very next morning. Believe it, it happened. Beating UConn and snapping the 111 game winning streak. Well, you talk about foul issues, and Vic mentioned it there. He's got a couple of key defenders in foul trouble. That's to me what's most striking. Dominique Dillingham, Richardson, to me, they're two best defenders. They do a lot of things that might be hard for you to pick up on unless you're playing, you're watching with a detailed eye. Now, Dillingham back in the game checking Kayla Davis. Got to be careful here not to pick up the third. He's talking to Holly about fatigue, and yet when we sat with him, he said, we think our depth can have an impact on South Carolina. Rebound tipped out of play here, opening seconds of the second quarter in Dallas. And South Carolina opening up a mini four-point advantage here, and they'll have the ball as Davis will put it in, the transfer from Georgia Tech. Gray with it. Giving it back to Davis. Gray can be a very explosive scorer as well. Reversing field. Can't knock it in. And Davis got hit. 
up around the head. She's just now getting back to midcourt. So numbers here for Mississippi State as she gets back into the play. Great denial there by Cuevas Moore, making someone else initiate the offense. Chapel, maybe forced that pass. Well, and Okori is not the same target as McCowan. She's not the scorer. Roughly the same size, but yeah. only about eight points a game for Okori. She is a senior. Harris, another pass interrupted, so play's gotten a bit sloppy here. William is back in it. She has had a magical tournament, 41 against Baylor. And the incredible shot the other night, last two games, averaging about 27 points a game, but she's been silent so far. Hey, look at how far off of Corey they play. It's like playing five on four. Back to Dillingham, can't stick at you, and 0 for 2 there. There is no rhythm for Mississippi State on the offensive end. Not at all. Way boss Moore. She can be electrifying when she gets rolling. Rebound up, and that's going to drop in. Gray with a terrific board there and takes the hit. Now, this is exactly what happens when dribble penetration exposes the backside of your defense, right? One of your teammates sees you get beat, they sort of go over to help, and automatically on the weak side of the floor, you see the rotation. Well, what does that open up? Weak side glass. And Alicia Gray, who's playing the power forward spot, corrals the offensive rebound. So Corey's first personal. Big Schaefer gets his daughter back in. Blair, the junior, who has been playing some very important minutes in the last few weeks. Gray, 73%, and a three-point play. Tonight, after Cubs cards on ESPN, close out your weekend. Sports Center at night with John and Steve. They highlight the Women's National Championship opening day. The NBA and more. Sports Center at night after opening night baseball on ESPN. On the drive, and let's see if that means William gets going. <laughs> My goodness, what a little hesitation she threw at the defender. That was pretty. The Mississippi State had gone a long time in between baskets, almost five minutes. Asia Wilson jumping inside. Too tough to stop that. Well, I thought she had turned down a nice little jump shot that was open. She drove into the size and still finished through it. Wilson, three-time SEC Player of the Year. No doubt about who the go-to player is for the Gamecocks. Schaefer directing traffic. Shot clock at eight. Shot clock at five. Chapel got to get a shot up inside. Great defense by Wilson. Shot clock violation. Now let's watch Morgan William. They call her Itty Bitty. Big heart, Holly Rowe. I can't believe she exposed. She's 5 2. Hesitation dribble nonetheless. Freezes two defenders, gets to the rack. Yeah, she might be 5 2 and a half and have a 5 11 wingspan. And Monica says, Yeah, that's my girl, Dave O'Brien. That's my girl. 23 16, South Carolina. Wilson up top, working on McCowan, taking a hit there, and loving it. But she really seeks physical contact. Well, she understands where her advantage is in this matchup. And, you know, that's, that's the play. Get the ball to Asia Wilson on that elbow. Where's she going to drive? Left. You know where she's going to drive, but she has a quickness advantage. And how about Asia Wilson with a nice little hezzy there? She just got beat on one with Morgan William, but she was able to get a step on McCowan and gets tagged. Asia Wilson locked in right now on the offensive end, playing excellent basketball. Another foul shot coming. Let's go to Holly. Well, Asia Wilson has a good reason to go in strong like that to the basket. Her dad, Roscoe, would make her work out with a 40-pound weight vest on when she was a little girl. She said, man, I hated that thing. It was hot, it was sweltering, and it was heavy. But boy, has it paid off. She thanks her father, who grew up near South Carolina but was never able to get a scholarship there, for making her the player she is today. And he said, you know, every time she's called out in a Gamecock jersey, it makes my heart warm. William with an air ball and out of play it goes. So she's a little bit off here in the first half for Mississippi State. 
And no denying the impact that Asia Wilson has had on the South Carolina program, electing to stay home. The native of Hopkins, South Carolina, trying to win a national championship tonight. Coming up, the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report, analysis on the first half, and a preview of Sunday night baseball, Cubs and the Cardinals. Opening day today, four more on ESPN coming up tomorrow. Asia Wilson is off to a great start, three for three from the field, and Mississippi State wanted to make it difficult on her. And you look at her offense and her ability to create space, it doesn't matter if you collapse, if you shut down the spacing. She still has the ability to get to her left hand and make you pay. Look at the athleticism finishing at the rim for Asia Wilson. She is a problem one-on-one -on -one for Mississippi State. Now think about who this team has been and how they've won for much of the year. They've dominated the paint points. And right now, they've got 10 of those and 10 of 12 from the free throw line. So all of that working this team over in the paint, paying dividends for South Carolina. Play by us more. Wilson's going to follow that. Can't connect. And McCallum there to rebound. Mississippi State needs somebody to step up offensively. It was so interesting in just a casual conversation with Andy Landers, the great longtime coach of Georgia. He said, I think people play Morgan William wrong. That's an offensive foul on Vivian. And he said, you know, I think you should pressure her. And Cuevas Moore, I think, has been tremendous. And we're going to take a look at her lean in a little bit. In for the Bulldogs, number 45, Chinway Okori. And so I thought it was fascinating. And one of the things that South Carolina has been able to do to Mississippi State is make them uncomfortable at the start of their offense, Kara. Yep. You disrupt the rhythm at the start of an offense, it's very hard for a group to get it back. Now, to Andy's point, you better have a player that has the ability to pressure Morgan Williams. South Carolina has that in Bianca Cuevas more. That makes all the difference if you have someone that can handle that matchup. To be a three-second violation with 5.46 to go before halftime here in Dallas. You know, the struggles of Mississippi State on the offensive end is what made Vip change his system a little bit, change his starters, all except for Morgan Williams. She can't get that one to go. She'll draw the foul. I thought the reaction by Cuevas Moore was priceless, though. Like, who, me? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> That'll be her first. But think about this, and you touched on the two matchups prior. In the SEC championship against South Carolina, they had five-point lead that did going into the third quarter into the fourth quarter 45 40 Carol from that point forward they scored a total of four points so South Carolina clearly you know has great scout on this team understands how to beat them how to limit them on the offensive end of the floor they went to zone a little bit there in that fourth quarter I thought that threw Mississippi State's rhythm off and this is a South Carolina team that has been elite defensively all year Davis to walk it across the 6'2 junior. One of the great pure jump shooters in women's basketball to force that shot up there. Now Mississippi State trying to grab some momentum and cut into this lead. Usually that means William will start to score some points. Wide open from three, but can't connect. On the run, Cuevas Moore, the catch. Outstanding defense there. William quickly got back to the other end. When you miss a shot and you're frustrated, a lot of players put their head down. That's not in Morgan Williams' DNA. Great hustle play right there and using that 5'11 wingspan you spoke of, Doris, to get the block. The kick for Wilson. No. Right back up, yes. I, I am always shocked at her ability to rebound in traffic, be the one to always seem to come down with it when bodies are around, and then the toughness, the strength, the hops to finish it. She thought that 19 rebound effort against Stanford might have been the best rebounding game of her life. And in the clutch, Vivians gave up the dribble and traveled with it. So back over it goes at six turnovers. 
from Mississippi State. You know, Asia Wilson showed me something in that semifinal game. It, the talent oozes from her body. I mean, it's, it's she's an All-American, but the toughness she displayed, the fact that she wasn't getting what she wanted on the offensive end, and she still had the ability to dominate the game and lead her team to the win. She was special, and I think she went up another level with her performance against Stanford. Ten tonight, along with two rebounds for South Carolina. Davis can hit that three. She's 36% out there. She kicked it, got it back, fires, and hits. Not exactly how they drew it up. <laughs> Doesn't show up in the box score as anything but two points. 29-18. South Carolina with their biggest lead. And that'll go the other way. Foul on the Bulldogs. Bulldogs right now, Schaefer getting a little bit nervous. He'll go to his bench and bring Richardson, the senior, back on. Last foul went against Chapel. Her first. Bruce Harris, the freshman from Indiana, moved into the starting lineup before SEC play. Just a rookie, but a lot of respect for her, and there's two. Tyesha Harris. 31-18, a danger zone for Mississippi State. Well, it's been a danger zone because they have been able to find no rhythm on the offensive end. Well, Corey looking for a guard. William with a dribble down and a whistle with 319 to play here in the quarter. Listen, we talked, we came on talking about the matchup at the point guard spot and the speed of Quaylos Moore, the denial, the inability to get the ball into the hands of this young woman who has done so much work for this team over the course of the last couple of games. It's disruptive to Mississippi State. Quaylos Moore's second foul puts her at the line. But this, even with that made foul shot, is a 19 to 5 run for South Carolina. Quaylos Moore heading to the bench. She has done some really good work tonight. William with another one coming, 84% at the line. So far, just six points for Morgan William here in the championship game. Harris, Wilson swinging inside, but it's off of her hand and out of play. That's their fifth turnover. Well, that's the right idea. I mean, she was open and you know, just put a little bit too much, too much on it. Dillingham, bottled up a bit. Shot clock down to 12. Here's Schaefer. Off the side of the backboard. South Carolina by 11. Wilson really commanding everybody's attention on that low block. But is Dillingham with another theft. Such a sticky defender. And really one of the best in the country. McCorey. And a lot of iron. It touched every bit of that rim, but it dropped in. I think that time she made up her mind. Listen, they're not guarding me, so on the catch, I got to be confident. Timeout. 2.05 to go before the break. 31 22, South Carolina. Two minutes before halftime here in the national championship game and South Carolina on top 31 to 22. This just feels so much like the matchup they played in the SEC championship game where 49 points was all Mississippi State could muster and Vic Schaefer had two weeks between the end of that game and the NCAA and Perry normally hates it because he thinks it's too long but he said I'm not going to get to a final four or a national championship scoring that little 
they've got to find a way to get started. Well, look at Klein to come in and grab that rebound for two. Well, how about starting boxing out and not giving second chance opportunities for South Carolina? You start getting some stops on the defensive end, that puts you in a better pace running into offense. And there's the performance by Mississippi State in that SEC. See if they can't get anything going here in the final minute and a half. There's a nice drive. Weaving in for two, Dominic Dillingham, the senior. Dominic Dillingham. She has six points. She's made a difference here. Again, not a big score, just seven points a game. But they need somebody. They need somebody. And, you know, Ty Harris has really done a poor job at closing out against Dillingham, who's not an outside shooter. She's got to be a little bit better one-on-one -on -one defensively. But credit Dillingham for her toughness. Gray likes that spin off the wow. window for two. Wow, that's a big-time play. To turn your back on a spin. Give her 11. And four out of seven along with four rebounds. 35-24. 45 seconds before halftime. Vivian's again. But she started out like a house of fire. Then she went cold. Although that's the way she shoots the ball. Last half minute before halftime in Dallas. South Carolina, the sharper team, the better defensive team. Doing it all without a key big. Davis thought about it. Tough D by Richardson. Right back up Wilson, nearly made it. Draws the foul with 10.6 to go. Richardson picked up her third foul on this play. Two shots. Bit of a swipe, I guess. Yeah, a swipe on the arm. But again, first shot defense, pretty good. Mm. Offensive rebound, extra opportunity. Wilson with another one coming. She has had such a great career at South Carolina. National Player of the Year candidate, school record holder for career blocks. And she crushed Stanford on the offensive glass in the national semifinal. She had eight offensive rebounds of their 20, and it was a 19-8 advantage. Her second jump is extraordinary. The athleticism, the reach, the length, she's a problem. She takes the pearls out that she loves to wear when she's not playing, boy, she's a problem. Takes the second, back up to 10. Herbert Harrigan back on now for the Gamecocks and Wilson to the bench for the final seconds. William to hustle it up. On the drive to her right. No, it was not her half. Harris has a chance to fire it up long and barely nick the iron. But South Carolina has to be very, very happy with that first half. They're on their way. 36 to 26, they lead over Mississippi State in our all SEC national championship game. They have played tight defense, they've made more shots for sure, particularly in that lane as we go to Hollis. Well, Asia, Mississippi State jumped out to a six point lead. What was it you did on defense to dig in and change the pace of that first half? Um, I mean, we just kind of, I think the emotions are really getting to us. Uh, we just had to settle down. I think that's all we did. And when we settled down and we started playing South Carolina defense, it, it, it just kind of came to us. So now we're in the floor of things. I know that this team wants very badly to get a national championship for your coach who's never won one as a player. What will it take in the second half to get that done? Um, I mean, we're just going to continue to do what we've been doing this whole season. It's just sticking to our system, never changing up things because it's a big game. we got to take it one possession at a time and just hope for the best. Thank you, Asia. Thank you. Holly, Asia, thank you very much. South Carolina on top, 36-26 over Mississippi State. As we go to Maria Taylor, Rebecca Lobo, and Andy Landers on the set for halftime. Thanks, Dave. Time for the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report in South Carolina and Mississippi State. They are now meeting for the third time this season, and 
None more important than this meeting, a national championship on the line when they met during the regular season. South Carolina was down seven at the half. Now they have a 10-point lead going into the locker room in the title game. Maria, Rebecca, and Coach Landers. Talk to me about what you've seen that's different about this meeting compared to what we've seen over the course of the season between these two teams. Well, in the first half, everything has been different. All the stats have flipped in South Carolina's favor. In the other games, Mississippi State dominated the rebounding, the turnover, all the important possessions that Mississippi State held those. Tonight, that's not the case. South Carolina is dominating the stat board, and they're getting to the free throw line. They've outscored Mississippi State 12-5. Yeah, South Carolina in the last matchup, they went 11 for 21 in the final four from the free throw line. So there was a little bit of a struggle there. But today they're 12 of 15, so they're knocking down some of those freebies from the stripe. Rebecca, your take on that first half. Well, when I was looking at I thought South Carolina was much more in attack mode than Mississippi State was. That's why they were able to get to the free throw line so much. The pace, they were able to push the pace. And they did it when, when Mississippi State made some mistakes. When they went early in their offense, this is a quick shot for Victoria Vivens. Look at that long rebound. They're able to get out in transition, and they're able to get inside. They had more point pains than Mississippi State in that first half as well. Once again, good defense. Every time they corral the basketball, they are looking to push the pace. They are looking to get in the paint, and I think that has really helped them thrive in this first half. On the opposite side of that, usually what we see from Mississippi State coach is that they want to get the ball to Morgan William, they want to walk the ball up the court, and they want to let the shot clock roll before they get into their yeah, offense. They've had some success at that, and, and when they've been able to run their offense, get into their offense, be patient in their offense, they've been successful. South Carolina's defense has been outstanding, but this is a great possession. Watch the clock. Look at how much time. Mississippi State forces South Carolina to defend all over the floor. They keep looking at inside. Today at shoot around, Vic said, get the ball into the post. They haven't had a lot of success, and when they have, there's been a double down. But a nice kick out. Gillingham brings it. South Carolina plays defense too long. Here's what I think South Carolina might consider doing in the second half. Get up under Andy Benny. Get up under Morgan Williams. Yeah. Make her go by. Don't let her choose when she wants to penetrate and try to cut your throat with her passing and her shooting. Get up in her face, force her, see if you can get her a little bit out of control. Yeah. Morgan Williams, she's got five points in the first half, was one for four, and she's the hero for Mississippi State in this NCAA tournament. Well, today is also opening day. We've got the Cubs and Cardinals coming up after our game. Dave O'Brien and Dan Schulman. They'll give you a little tease of what you have to look forward to later in the day after this. Thanks for coming on back with us. Dave O'Brien alongside Kara and Doris and Holly Rowe as well. Kara, it looked like South Carolina was a far more poised team in the first 20. They were because they were the aggressors on both ends of the floor. And you look at the job that Bianca Cuevas Moore did guarding Morgan William, disrupting the rhythm of the entire Mississippi State offense. Remember, Morgan William is a player that's captivated the country in the last two rounds with their offensive performances. How do you shut someone down like that? Do not let her touch the basketball. Denial all over the floor, face guard away from the basketball. And as a result, Mississippi State off rhythm. And what do you have to do against a Mississippi State team that denies? They're up in full court pressure. You've got to be able to make plays and Alicia Gray. How about that drive? The spin has to get by two defenders and think about this individual plays just three assists on 12 baskets for South Carolina. Their ability to make plays against pressure special. The Mississippi State a big part of their success as you both know is turning over their opponent. They turn Baylor over 17 times. They turn UConn over 17 times. They're not able to do that against South Carolina. Not yet. Just six Gamecock turnovers. Yeah, I think your focus if you're Mississippi State is stop fouling on the defensive end, right? 12 of the 36 points for South Carolina at the free throw line. If you can stop fouling, make them take contested shots, that can get you back in this game. Morgan William with it now, and she was a little out of sorts in that first half. Right before we got to live action, Holly Rowe chatted her up. Morgan, what is making it so difficult right now with Bianca Cuevas more guarding you? What do you got to do to get loose? Yeah, that's a lot of pressure. I got to relieve myself, and I got to run 10. I got to run offense, and I have turnovers. How do you relieve that pressure? Got to attack pressure with pressure. What did Coach say in the locker room that's your takeaway message you got to do here in the second half? It's coaching our heart right now, so like I said, we got 20 minutes left, so give it your all. Thanks, Morgan. 
Well, she's their leader, and she's the one responsible for getting them into good offense. And what she has done more in this tournament than she's done in her career is call her own number. And it's got to be a good mix of getting shots for herself and her teammates in the second 20 minutes. Whistle here on the baseline. Kayla Davis had picked up her second foul before that exchange. 9.22 to go in the third, and South Carolina with a fairly comfortable lead, but Mississippi State with the ball. Mississippi State has never won a national championship in any sport. Trying to come back from a double-digit deficit here tonight in Dallas. Vivian's a little bump there before the shot. So some fast whistles here. That'll go against maybe Harris. We'll see with 9.17 to go. And it will be on Harris, her first. And that'll put Vivian to the line. Associated Press, third team All-American, first team All-SEC by the coaches. And a pure scorer. Amanda, they need her now. The game started with the basketball in her hands. She looked like she was going to roll to a big night. You know, when you look at her driving the basketball, I think that's very key in the second half because the way South Carolina's playing is trying to push her off of the three-point line. With her size and her frame, she's going to have to make some plays driving and finishing through contact. A combined 1-3 between the two teams in the first half. McCown with the foul. Her second. Up top, Davis. Driving on Dillingham. Pretty good matchup there. That's sweet. Well, she just has the complete game. She can drive to get right to the rack. She could pull up for the mid-range, and the key to that play, Dave, was the hard stop, right? Because the defender was retreating already. Vivian's tiptoeing off the window. That won't drop. Rebound taken away by Wilson. Cuevas Moore. Fast strike for the Gamecocks. Give her five points. Dillingham swings it. No finish there for McCowan. Gray wants to keep on pushing that tempo. Wilson tapped it up. Gray tried to keep it alive. She came crashing in and will pick up the foul. That change from defense to offense has been so good for South Carolina. Saw it at the end of the first quarter, at the end of the third quarter. Missed shots, turnovers. They are quicker. They are quicker than Mississippi State in changing ends. And as a result, they're getting some quality looks in transition. An interesting exchange between head coach and player. And he had to get after her in the first half. He actually said, Morgan, play harder. Her demeanor, her countenance doesn't look the same. And you wonder, you touched on this, Dave, the emotional win over UConn. That's going to be a block. Are they out of gas, Mississippi State? Yeah, to me, it was going to be the most interesting thing coming into this game, certainly one of them. How would she bounce back from that incredible high the other night? And it is a case of needing to bounce back because when you're up that high, you can't get any higher. Well, that's the part of the Final Four that, you know, it's hard to, to predict until you experience it, or it's hard to know what to do. These, these games take a lot of wind out of your sails, not just physically, but emotionally, and all of the distractions that you have. And you win that semifinal game in the fashion Mississippi State did, and then in less than 48 hours, you're playing for the whole thing? That's not easy to do. And yesterday, so both teams get in a lot of time for practice. And Mississippi State uh, is always under Vic practice is hard. They were doing a drill that had me absolutely terrified. Holly Rowan are sitting there. Another drive and turnover by Richardson. They were doing this rebounding drill, Dave, that there were three players squared off looking opposite another player. The, the job was to check them out. I was terrified somebody was going to get hurt. It was a rebounding drill that you typically see at the start of the year, not the finish. Let's go to Holly Rowe as Davis launches and can't hit that three-pointer. Well, that was a very physical practice for Mississippi State, but contrast that with South Carolina. They did a walkthrough, they did a few half-court options, and then they spent about 20 minutes doing yoga and recovery work. Very different styles in practice yesterday, and with a much shorter South Carolina bench that Dawn Staley went eight deep on in the first half, they have a much fresher feel to this 
Gamecock team. And they are looking like it tonight, Holly, no question. This could be a huge basket in the game, and they want Wilson whirling in. Not there for her, 42 to 28. Gamecocks really building up a comfort zone here in the national championship game in Dallas. And unfortunately, as much as Mississippi State has improved on the offensive end, they can't score in bunches. And they're going to have to really do some work on the defensive end to try to stay attached in the next three or four minutes. And you're thinking to yourself, stop, score, stop. Well, Vic Schaefer may be another made basket by the Gamecocks from absolutely needing a timeout. Wilson on the high post. On McCown, the kick is Davis for three. Oh, that was in the cylinder. Not sure how that came out. No, she comes back with a little smile on her face as if to say, you've got to be kidding me, that thing was down. Dillingham will launch. Yes! The Bulldogs in dire need of a big shot, and they got one. Unexpected offense from Ms. Dillingham tonight. She has nine points. That's two more than her season average for an entire game. Harris trying to penetrate. Sweet there and a block. We see this, right? Mississippi State prides itself on its ability to take charges. Their feet are usually so fast. All night long they've been charged for this, where normally they pick these up. It feels like everything's just a step slow. And Ty goes, yes, ma'am, I'm stepping to the free throw line. Give her five points. Big play to make it 45 to 31. Well, just great setup there by Don Staley with that play call, though, because with everyone lifted, it's a much longer run for Vivians there on the weak side defense to try and get in position for that charge. Vivians with her second personal. Richardson fell down. Vivians on the dribble drive and a block. 523 to go in the third. And South Carolina with a 14 point advantage. And it'll be Vivians to shoot. Davis with her third. Two shots. So two for the junior from Carthage, Mississippi, who hit 77%. And coming up tonight, 8.30 on ESPN. Opening day on Sunday Night Baseball. It'll be the World Series champion Cubs at Bush Stadium to take on their rivals, the Cardinals. Should be an at 8.30. The Cubs, 108 years of misery. And Mr. O'Brien, the Red Sox going to be any good this year or what? Uh, the Red Sox are going to be exceptionally good. They'll start to show that tomorrow afternoon against the Pittsburgh Pirates. With Rick Porcello on the mound. You feel pretty good about your staff, don't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. As Vivians knocks in the jump shot. It's a little life in the legs. So back to 11. Harris trying to get by William Dillingham stayed home. Cuevas Moore, how about that pass? Gray, little bobble, can't hit it. Kind of amazing she caught it with the pace on that pass. So an opening here suddenly. Can William get some of that magic back, which has guided the Bulldogs to this point? In an amazing tournament run. Shot clock down to seven. Dillingham has had a hot hand. She's got to shoot it. And she hits it. A two-pointer. And she was forced into it, but she got it. She does whatever is needed. And that's what I love about Dominique Dillingham. She's their defensive stopper. She's their aggressor. She's their leader. But they need points. That's exactly what she's providing here in the third quarter. Approaching the four-minute mark. And they're getting back in the game. And a whistle off the ball with 403 showing. They'll take the timeout as well. That'll go on Brianna Richardson of Mississippi State. That's her fourth. Timeout on the floor. The 2017 WNBA draft presented by State Farm coming on April 13. First round coverage at 7. The San Antonio Stars have the top pick this year, followed by the Chicago Sky and two selections 
for the Dallas Wings as well. Wow, look at that collection of talent. Gold medalists in Rio, the 2016 team. Birdie, Moni, Stewie, Catch, TT, so many good players. There's DJ Way at the end. Congratulations to those guys representing the United States. And of course, Don Staley, just named recently as the 2020 head coach of the U.S. Women's National Basketball Team. Can't think of a more deserving person with all she's contributed to USA Basketball since she was a teenager. Three-time Olympic gold medalist for Dawn, of course, a Hall of Fame inductee, the Naismith Hall of Famer. Steal by William, pretty. Quick hands, and she converts. So put a little more game pressure on the Gamecocks. That one tipped out of play. Is it another turnover? How about that? Look at Vic Schaefer pumped up. His defense is starting to do its job. And the Bulldogs are growling in Dallas. This is a 7-0 run as they force another turnover. And right back in the game, a 7-point advantage for South Carolina for the Bulldogs with the basketball. Let's bring in Holly Rowe. In that last timeout, Vic Schaefer challenged his point guard, Morgan William. He looked right at her. What do I have to do to get you to play harder? She said nothing. He said, do I need to pull you out? She said, no, coach. And she came out and played hard for him right Chapel there. Chapel nails the two-pointer. Well, the steal and the assist. And look at the deny of Cuevas Moore. Well, it feels like for the first time tonight in a national championship, it's game on. It feels like the first time tonight we're seeing the real Mississippi State team on the defensive end. Tie up on the play. South Carolina does have the arrow, but the pressure continues. Well, this is what Mississippi State has done under Vic Shaver. They have been one of the most discomforting defenses in the country. And Don Staley's team can't get casual now. They won't stop playing under this guy. Kayla Davis. Kayla Davis coming back on along with Harris for South Carolina. Pliny and Herbert Harrigan will hit the bench. 319 showing here in the third. Suddenly the Gamecocks looking a little bit dazzled by this defense. Davis steps in. William wants the motor again. Taking on three defenders, nearly lost it. Vivian fires. Boy, Chapel, the big rebound. Second effort. Vivian's again. No. Well, Wilson came out and denied her. Five point lead for the Gamecocks. William on Harris. Here's Cuevas Moore. She'll drive it. Rebounded away by Vivians. Both of these defenses are making these teams one-on-one -on -one basketball teams. Nothing is coming through the flow of the offense, right? It's somebody's got to put their head down and make a play off the bounce. Chapel over the top. McCowan blocked by Wilson. The Chapel got it back. And she's everywhere. Gray went for it. Very nearly a backcourt violation there, taken away by Davis. On the run, Gray tiptoeing in, yes! That lateral step that she made to avoid that setup for the charge, I mean, wow! Was that athletic by Alicia Gray. Give her 13. The lead back up to seven for South Carolina. Neither one of these schools has ever won the national championship. Whistle there before the shot with a minute 34 left in the quarter. So to me, consecutive possessions where Mississippi State has executed offense. This is the Euro step you were talking about. She can score it, Kara, when her shoulders are not necessarily square. Her athleticism, the frame, that is a special play by a special wing talent. Gray with the foul, and that's number five for them. So Chapel's at the line and shooting two. She's making an impact here in this national championship. Jasmine Holmes, the gifted sophomore from Gulfport, Mississippi, now back on for the Bulldogs. And William to the bench. And William is showing a lot more leadership out there these last several minutes. Let's go to Holly. 
Well, you see that fearless attitude of Alicia Gray. That's why she got six stitches and came back and finished practice. She's not scared. She says it's because she grew up with those older brothers that taught her how to be strong in the driveway. See a little bit of strength on that as she tries to finish and draws the foul. <laughs> she needed every bit of the courage. It probably felt like going against a brother on that play, Holly Rowe. You're staring at six foot seven. Hello. Macau in her third foul, though. It's a really smart play by Gray to go right at her. And get another personal on the big. Two shots. Two shots. Gray makes 73 percent. Dick Schaefer, the minister of defense, always preaching defense. And one of the great teachers of D in the country, 48 to 42, South Carolina. Holmes, very fast. McCowan caught it and draws the foul. Sierra McCowan picks up that hit and hit by Wilson, number two on Asia. Two shots. So McCowan, the 6'7 sophomore with two coming. The top Bulldog rebounder. She can be an offensive player too, though. She exploded for 25 against Florida. 26 and 12, along with six blocks against Washington. Come on, Dave. This kid's got a chance to be special. Big time frame, improving on the offensive end. Really earnest kid who wants to be good. She has 10 rebounds here tonight. A four-point game. Less than a minute to go in the third. Gray stopped on the baseline. Needs help. Wilson on McCowan. Yes! Up and over. Terrific touch. And usually with two or three bodies draped all over her. She never lacks for company, does she? Not one, not two, sometimes three defenders for Asia to have to get by. 15 points for Wilson. Chapel. Last half minute of the third. Chapel back it away. Eight to shoot. Vivians. Looks like she wants to get it up there. Her jumper. That glances away. Wilson with a rebound. Plenty of time here, 10 seconds before the end of the third. Davis, now down to three. Her jumper, yes! South Carolina with a flourish at the very end. They take a 52 to 44 lead at the end of three. Well, as the game shrinks, each possession rises in its importance. You see the emotion, you see the focus of these young women whose emotion can carry them across the finish line. Welcome back here with the coach of South Carolina, Don Stalen. It feels like someone just turned up the heat in here. Mississippi State went on a little bit of a run, but what did you like about the way your team answered? I like the way we responded. We're still in the good places. We gave up one possession in this in this period. This is a SEC basketball. Asia Wilson just came to the bench right now, screaming one more quarter away from a championship for your team. What's it going to take? It's going to take us to, to be disciplined on both sides of the basketball. We know they probably have a, another run in them. We have to sustain. We have to stay the course. We have to stay disciplined um, um, on the defensive side of the ball. And then we need shots at the basket. Turnovers got us in a little bit of trouble in the third quarter. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Holly. Well, she looks pretty comfortable. Her team leading 52 to 44. As you look at the scores by quarter, Mississippi State coming to life offensively to cut into that lead. And you look at Don Staley and you listen to her talk there with Holly and realize there's one missing piece in her glorious career, and that is an NCAA championship. She never got it as a player, despite playing in three final fours of her career. She was so close, she could taste it, never came to pass, and here she is 10 minutes away as a head coach. The only most outstanding player in a final four for the women, it's happened a few times on the men, for the women who lost a championship game but still named the most outstanding player. Inside from McCowan and an easy two to make it 52 to 46, give her seven. 
So underway here in the fourth quarter of the last women's college basketball game of the season. Davis to the paint, to her right. Yes. It's such a hard matchup. And, and Gray and Davis, the length that they have as an advantage. I mean, Dillingham was pretty good positioning there, but Kayla Davis just a little bit better of an athlete and has got the size on her. Davis is a major reason they've gone this far because of how she caught fire after Coates went down with the ankle injury and was lost for the season. South Carolina a chance to get back on top by double digits. Davis again. No. She followed her own miss. Ty Harris, the freshman point guard. Don Staley with so much faith in her. Wilson bottled up and tipped out of play. And it'll go the other way with 8.38 to play. It'll be Mississippi State ball. McCowan draws a double team. Davis scrapping for it on the baseline, and out it goes. Just not able to catch it cleanly. How about the help side defense there from Kayla Davis? And I wonder, how long do you wait if you're Vic Schaefer for Morgan William? I mean, this is the player that has captivated us with her offensive performances over the last two games. Hasn't played particularly well tonight. Giving her a blow right now, but how long do you allow her to sit on the bench there? When would you bring her back in? Last possession. Mm. Yeah. She does go to a quarry. Here's Vivian. She can't sink it. Wow, that's a quick whistle. Very quick. I, I didn't you know, listen with that play. That's an equal opportunity ball there. She hasn't looked exactly the same in this ball game, has she? Not at all. The foul will go on Dillingham, her third for Mississippi State. Well, this speaks to how Vic Schaefer runs his program. If you don't play and have an effort level high enough, it doesn't matter what you've done in the past. He is not going to allow you to be in the game unless your effort is up to snuff. Harris going around the back, her jump shot. Comes right to a quarry. Nobody exactly on fire at the moment. Dillingham pulls up, can't sink it. And it'll go back over to South Carolina. 7.49 left. We are in the fourth quarter of the national championship game. All SEC. It's the third time in history it's been an all SEC foul. First two times, Tennessee won them both. Pliny high up on the wing. Seven to shoot. Downtown, that one won't fall in for Gray. There's a lid on both baskets at the moment. Vivian's running in hard, no. McCorey with the battle for the rebound. And a whistle with 7.13 to go. And a foul on the play. Gamecocks foul, number 10, Alicia Rick Gray. Rick commissioner of the SEC. Well. You know he's thrilled to be watching this one tonight. He can relax. Surprised he doesn't have an adult beverage in his hands, Mike. He can just chill tonight. I'm on either way. He's so winning. No matter what. Foul on Gray will be her third. He said he has to try for neutrality. He looks like the picture of neutrality. And for the Bulldogs, Meanwhile, Morgan William remaining on South the bench Carolina. for Mississippi Carolina. State. And no sign also that Vic Schaefer is eager to get her back into this thing. The Bulldogs will have it. It'll be a first time national championship for whoever wins this one tonight. Another whistle. We're hearing a lot of those here in the early stages of the fourth. That one on Davis, Kayla Davis. And that'll be number four. Number three, Kayla Davis, her fourth, 202. So Richardson will be to the line now for Mississippi State. Alicia Gray. And Alicia Gray back on for the Gamecocks. Kayla Davis. So Davis has to go to the bench in deep trouble with four fouls. Two shots. 
Richardson holds the school record for games played, and she scored over a thousand points. Good touch. Catch the Frozen for a second semifinal from Chicago, Notre Dame, and Denver facing on Thursday, 9:30 on ESPN2. And visit NCAA.com. It's the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Bulldogs pressing again, looking for another turnover. And that's a travel. So, so they the, get one. Yeah, the pressure opportunistic. And, you know, the inbounder really had no choice. You're obviously trying to get to your point guard. Nobody else was open. But how about the reading of the center fielder in that defense, right? Just play in the middle of the floor. Where's that ball going? Tracking on it like a defensive back. McCowan up to set a big screen. For Dillingham. Holmes slamming on the brakes. Yes. Nice play there by Holmes. And what do we see the difference in, at least offensively, with Morgan William not in the game, is there's no face guarding. So Mississippi State able to get into their offense and get quality looks. Low scoring and hard fought. It's interesting to me that Ty Harris has been content to let somebody else handle the basketball. And I think Dawn Staley just gave her an ear fill saying, hey, go get the ball because you got another turnover. Things are coming apart. Freshman point guard has got to stand up and say, it's my turn to run the offense. And Dawn, one of the great point guards in women's college basketball history, Dave, not, not pleased with her freshman at this particular moment. My favorite thing about this Mississippi State team is their unwavering belief. Like it doesn't matter the time of the game, the score of the game. They feel like they have an opportunity to win every time. Well, it would be a first against South Carolina this year. The Gamecocks have beaten them twice. Vivians, no. Richardson, good hustle to grab that rebound. I'm really curious to see when South Carolina gets the ball back. Does Ty Harris go find it, Dave? She's on Holmes, up top, McCowan, got to it on the baseline. That's a great pass to get it to Richardson. Wilson with a block, and she kept it in play. Some of the crowd howling for a foul, but a clean play by Asia Wilson. Mid-range, yes. Terrific touch. She has 17, her brother Ronaldo there. And a six-point advantage. Another big night for Wilson. Coming up on five minutes to go in the national title game. Take it away. Pliny. She'll back it out. Really good decision, Dave. Didn't have numbers. Understanding time to score. Got to get a good possession. And see, when Playboss Moore comes back in, those two are more interchangeable. Here's the kick, Gray. Terrific play for two. Every time they make a push, execution, answering with a basket. South Carolina and Vic Schaefer going to use one. Timeout, Mississippi State. 4.47 to go. South Carolina by eight. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, every day. What's in your wallet? A couple of fan cams live from Starkville and the Hump, and also one from South Carolina watch party coming in from the Carolina Ale House in Columbia. Time now for our Capital One Cup impact performance. So the first team All-American on the South Carolina team, Asia Wilson doing work. Look at those numbers, and they can deploy her any number of areas. How about the spin? You know she wants to come uh, come back left, even if she moves that spin. And watch what she does against six foot seven. Let me clear some space, face up on the six seven. Use my quickness, my high release point to go ahead and do work, and then the quick trigger. She's dictating the action in that last sequence. That's pretty stuff. 440 to go in Dallas. Richardson determined and banks in two. And cuts it to 58-52 South Carolina. Here comes that press again, which has been wreaking havoc in the second half, although Harris tore right through it. 
Ray has 16 for South Carolina. Wilson with 17. They've both been very tough on the glass. Here's Gray again, not to be denied. I mean, one on one, right? Richardson makes a great play through a little bit of contact on one end, and then Alicia Gray. Wow. 18 and 8 for the junior from Sandersonville, Georgia. Look at Vivian's as far away as she could possibly get. That was a very quick shot. That was not what they needed. 342 remaining. It's Gray again. Looking for the bank. Wilson, big rebound taken away. Back outside. And Cuevas Moore will stop play in an official timeout. Maybe a clock issue here with 333 to go. So a stoppage in play. South Carolina on top 60 to 52 over Schaefer's Bulldogs. And he's going to bring his team over to his bench. Time out on the floor. And not happy at the moment, but still plenty of time remaining in the national championship in Dallas. Talk about Don Staley in the Final Four 1990, sophomore year. Played Tara Vanderbilt in the national semis, but lost to Stanford. The national championship game came in 1991, junior year. She had 28 against Tennessee, but lost in overtime in the title game despite a magnificent effort. 1992, senior year, 19 against Stanford. That was in the semifinals. Would lose 66-65. Her shot missing at the buzzer. Oh, so close three times, but no smile for Don. We'll see about tonight. She is 333 away from a national championship. Let's go to Holly. We asked John Staley about that. She said, it's something that haunted me. I still think of it to this very day. But when she was out of the room, we asked her players, what would it mean for you to provide this piece of history for her? They said, it's our only goal to make our coach cry. She walked in, heard us talking about it, and said, I don't cry. I'm from North Philly. We'll see tonight, perhaps. You know, when she took over South Carolina, she said, I I'm driven by challenges. And frankly, I thought it would be easier. They only had one losing season. Nice drive by Asia, getting a step closer. Think about this. When Dawn took over Temple, very similar, limited success. She thought it would be as easy at South Carolina. She said, frankly, I thought we'd win sooner than we did. So this has not been an easy process. They get great, great fan support. Terrific fans in South Carolina. Led the nation in attendance. Chapel looking inside, trying to go over the top and nearly stolen away. Tipped out of play by Harris. Don's story is just remar remarkable. I mean, from the projects of North Philly, proud graduate of Dobbins Tech. I mean, her career that she's had, it's not supposed to happen from where she came from. And how she's been able to impact so many generations of young women as a teammate, as a coach. Dawn was a coach before she started coaching. If you watched her play the point guard position, she was directing traffic, calling out plays. Just a true, true hoop head. Locked once again by Wilson. So much of the success is wrapped up in Asia Wilson, too, and convincing her to stay home and not leave the state of South Carolina and build something here. And here they are closing in on a national title. Still time, though, for the Bulldogs. Wilson on the spin. Can't connect. Davis outfought everybody for the rebound. Swing for Harris. She won't shoot the three. Wilson again powering in for two. That kid is your first team All-American. The hometown South Carolina girl could have gone anywhere in the country, but stayed home minutes away. Holmes, no. Davis, a big rebound. Davis has said, really had an active second half. She's been all over the glass. She's made big hustle plays. And how about, you know, Kara touched on, it doesn't matter who you are or what you, or what you have done. Vic is like, you're going to play hard and do the things. Morgan Williams has been, Morgan Williams, excuse me, has been on the bench the entire fourth quarter. Eight points, four assists, but sitting at the most crucial juncture after her incredible performance so far in this tournament. Here's Gray. Around and out. Guess wow. who with the rebound? Right back up. Wow. 
Tell you what, that's a national championship play type play. That's what that was, Asia Wilson. Rebounding over the back of a six foot seven player. That's just more want to and discipline. That is a championship play right there, young woman. You can hear the celebrating beginning from the state of South Carolina. By the way, they've been doing it all year in every sport, it feels like. And look at the emotion, my goodness gracious. You're talking about the program that before dawn in the SEC in the five prior years, they were 20 and 60, and there was not a soul in the building, and now number one in the country in attendance, and boy, do the South Carolina fans travel. Asia Wilson has taken over this game in the fourth quarter here down the stretch. Okay, it's done. This is your most outstanding player of the final four. She's shown it on the defensive end, blocking shots, being the bigger player in her matchup, and then on the offensive end, just giving your team extra opportunities. That's just more effort. I want it more than you. What, what a performance by Asia Wilson. Feels like she had sealed the deal here. Way downtown, that's an air ball. Wilson, 23 points, 10 rebounds, 8 points in the fourth quarter. Coming up on one minute to go to national championship. South Carolina surging here in the last quarter. Harris slicing through. That won't drop. But under a minute now. Gamecock fans begin to get on their feet. They are seconds away from their first national championship. First, the men getting all the way to the final four with a magnificent run, 66-54. With 46.1 to go. And stay tuned for the championship net cutting ceremony brought to you by Werner Ladder. That's coming up after the game on ESPN3. And Don Staley is going to start looking for those scissors. They are so close. South Carolina building and building over the years with Don Staley at the helm and Asia Wilson. And remember, they lost one of the great post players in the country. 13 points, 11 rebounds a game. Many people wrote them off as far as going on and winning a national championship. That is correct because what their bread and butter had been with Elena Coates was the most dangerous, punishing, high-low tandem in the country. Give a ton of credit to Dawn and her staff. They have to change the way they play and what they emphasize. They go four out, one in. They create driving lanes for Gray and Kayla Davis, who are elite wings. Those two step up and answer. Their spacing, their execution, their timing, everything became better on the offensive end. How about that stat we just showed you? No three-pointers in this game. First time in 15 years. Last time that happened for a team to win a national championship without a three, 2002. In this age of the three-pointer. I'll tell you, the stat that stands out to me as we talk about them not having Elena Coates and how they had to change the way they played, you're talking about one of the more dominant forces in the paint in the country. Look at the paint points. 42 for South Carolina, 20 for Mississippi State, doubling them up. Well, now come the substitutions. Don's going to bring in some of her bench kids so they can say forever, I played in a national championship. Wilson stepping aside. She looks exhausted, frankly. But boy, did she earn this. And so did Alicia Gray, who is sensational. I thought Kayla Davis stepped up huge in the second half. Very emotional. We'll see if Don gets emotional. She says she won't. And the other side of that story, of course, Morgan William flying high just 48 hours ago with the shot of her life and one of the great performances in the history of this tournament. And has not seen the court in the fourth quarter. 41.4 to go. And you seniors, right, the heartbreak of the final seconds of your career. Morgan William, just a junior, but that was Dominique Dillingham with tears streaming down her face, the agony, and the ecstasy on the other side. A dream coming true for Asia. 
came home to get South Carolina the championship game. And then she put the team on her shoulders when it mattered the most and looked like a true All-American in every sense of the word. We touched on this a little bit earlier in the fourth quarter. Really the foundational piece to this program. Other great players before, Tiffany Mitchell, Elisa Welch was an important recruit for Dawn Staley, but when the number one player in the country decides to stay home, decides to help her home state school try and win a national title, that's when the tide turned for South Carolina in terms of being a Final Four contender and being a team that could win a national championship. Dick Schaefer looks like he's going to every one of his players and a personal word for each of them. Tell you what, you want to celebrate a championship, you better move to the state of South Carolina. Because <laughs> you're going to get one or two or three or four in any variety of sports. Herbert Harrigan at the line here with 29.3 to go. You think about College World Series and National Football Championships and now just moments away from the Women's NCAA Division I Championship for the Gamecocks for the first time in school history. Up 67 to 54. They have had a magnificent season. And it's going to end by cutting down the nets here in Dallas. Another whistle with 20 seconds remaining. And look at the coaching staff breaking down as well. What a marvelous scene there. That is one of the most glittering athletic resumes. We have seen anybody produce in this country, not just in basketball, in this country. I think she, as I said at the start of this telecast, I think she's the most important young coach in women's college basketball, and I don't think this will be the end of her national championships. Perhaps just the beginning for South Carolina. Their fans are starting to make some noise. They're going to party tonight here in Texas. Final seven seconds, South Carolina. A spectacular performance, and South Carolina has won the national championship. Wilson and the Gamecocks are number one for the first time in school history NCAA champions of women's college basketball. What a performance by Asia. Well, your first team All-American, you need your stars to be stars on the grandest stage, and she was 23 points. 10 rebounds and you want to talk about a closer eight points in the fourth quarter in 34 total minutes well we want to hear from the star asia wilson joined by holly rowe asia as you stepped off the court the tears had already started what was the hardest part of what you just accomplished young lady i mean just overcoming adversity this team has played with so much heart just so many, we face so much adversity and just just I can't even put in the words the feeling that I've had and what we've been through and just to finally I finally achieve a huge goal of all of ours is just amazing feeling and I just want to thank God and I just want to thank my parents and our coaching staff. What was the hardest adversity that you got through as a team this year? Um, I mean it's tough losing a great player like Elena Coates. Um, it really is tough and she was a big part of us and when she went down a lot of people probably said we couldn't do it and that's hard on a of college kids. That is hard but we overcame it. And now we're national champions. I know there was a time in the driveway. Your dad had you in that 40-pound weight vest in the heat. Yep. What do you say to your parents that helped you get to this moment tonight? Thank you so much for just believing in me when no one else did. Uh, just working me, pushing me to just limits, getting me out of my comfort zone and sending me to a great school like he would and just letting me just, just be myself. And I think that really helped me and just built my, my character. And I just love them for everything. You stayed home and built this Gamecock team into a national championship. What did you see in Dawn Staley that made you choose them? Um, I just saw honesty. 
and I just saw just just loyalty. She was loyal through me throughout this whole recruiting process, and she she was honest. She said, you know, if you come with me, we're gonna win a national championship, and I, she stuck with her word, and here we are. I know how badly your team wanted this for Dawn, something she was unable to accomplish herself. Yes. What will this mean to hand that trophy to your coach, oh Dawn Staley? Man, it's probably gonna be more tears. It's hard to believe it'll be more tears, but it'll mean the world. Thank you, Asia. What a wonderful moment. Asia Wilson, the All-American. She was every bit that tonight in the national championship, and we'll have more in a moment. Well, I'm not seeing any tears there from Don Staley, but I'm seeing one of the biggest smiles I've ever seen in celebration amongst the Gamecocks. Their first national championship here tonight in Dallas, Texas, knocking off Mississippi State, putting an end to that magnificent run by the Bulldogs in our all-SEC final. Let's go back to Holly. I'm here with Alicia Gray of South Carolina. And Alicia, there was a time tonight when Mississippi State pulled within four. What did your team do in that moment to gain some distance in this championship? Uh, well, during halftime, Coach Sunny told us they was going to make a run. We just had to be able to hit back, and that's what we did. We, just, we didn't get impatient or anything. We just stuck to the game plan. We got our run also. I thought there were some moments in this game. You went to the hoop with authority. Your toughness gave your team some toughness. How did you see your contribution to your teammates? Uh, my main thing was just do anything to help the team win. My teammates were telling me to go, go at her, like attack the basket and be aggressive. That's what I did. You're going to bear some scars from this. This eye is looking pretty ginger right now. Will you care if you have that scar for the rest of your life? I don't even care. It's new for the national championship, so I don't even care. Thank you so much. Thank you. She's a great kid. It's been really a pleasure getting to know Alicia, and her toughness is real. She's got that great smile and personality, but she's an absolute warrior. Amazing that the two great friends, and on the pregame show, they documented the relationship between Asia Wilson and Alicia Gray and the synergy between them on and off the court. And boy, you talk about coming up big for her as well at the power forward spot, 18 points and 10 boards. Along with three block shots and a steal. You know, I really thought the key in this game is when you go up against elite defenses, Mississippi State had an elite defense, South Carolina had an elite defense, the individual teams that had players that could make plays one-on-one -on -one and against multiple defenders, and South Carolina had two players that were able to do that. Nobody from Mississippi State was able to do that on the offensive end of the floor. You know, one of the toughest things to do in sports, as you both know better than anybody, is to beat a really good opponent three times. And that's exactly what South Carolina did against an outstanding basketball team all three times they met this year. Well, so they hold them to 49 in the SEC championship, only six points better for Mississippi State. So we kept talking about the, the program built on defense. How about Dawn's defense, South Carolina? What an extraordinary job on that end. And I said this towards the end of the game. You lose a player like Elena Coates and you dominate in the paint. 42 points in the paint with Asia Wilson really as your only true post player. You dominate on the glass. You're plus 13 on the glass. I mean, this was a complete game for South Carolina. They just executed better and they were the tougher team. That yeah, rebounded Mississippi State 40 to 27. Some of the other numbers, they held them to 35% shooting while South Carolina hit about 46%. And give the Gamecocks credit to at the foul line. They made 77%. That's about five points better than their season average. Those were in the clutch. You know what's interesting, Dave, is, and I've said this, I think Dawn is the most important young coach in the country. And again, we're, we're at the first Final Four without the legendary Pat Summit. Somebody has got to step forward and raise their level and take on the juggernaut that has been the Connecticut Huskies, right? They bow out thanks to the brilliant performance of Mississippi State. But they're coming right back. This is the first national championship for Dawn. She's a high-level recruiter. She's the United States Olympic coach. The women's game needs a rival, somebody who's ready to raise their level and continue to roll like Dawn has done. Well, let's go to Holly Roll right now with Dawn. Well, Dawn, your players have done something for you that I know was, you've been waiting a very long time for. You have a piece of a national championship. What did you think as those seconds tipped away in your mind? God is all things. He's all things. I give him the glory. This does not happen without, without him. 
blessing our program, blessing our, our players and uh, putting his hand on our program all year long. I know that uh, you had to get some big people, Asia Wilson, Elena Coates, some kids to stay home and buy into this program and believe. What did you say to make them stay and be Gamecocks? Um, you have to take a tribute to the former players. I gotta go all the way back to my, my Temple days. Those are the guys that really believed in our vision. And we took that vision to South Carolina. And that vision was, we will be national champions if you stick with us, if you're disciplined, if you believe, okay, if you're willing to work hard. And all of these players believed in that. And I'm just so happy that our words are coming true today. So I'm extremely happy for every, our tree of, of coaches and our tree of players. Um, but these guys were the ones that got it done. I wanted to send a special shout out to your little tiny guard. You know, she got benched midway through the season, lost her starting job, Bianca Cuevas Moore. And she came out here tonight and put on a defensive showcase to change this game. What do you say about a player who sticks with you and trusts you like that? It, you know, Bianca Cuevas, I am so proud of her uh, maturation process. We've had it, you know, we've had it for three years now. She could have easily walked away from all of this, walked away from the discipline, walked away and went back to New York because some of her New York people were trying to get her to come back. But she stayed. The very thing that makes Bianca Bianca made her stay. Now look at her. She's a national champion. I know you had to have some other people step up, and I'm not sure I've seen two players step up more than Kayla Davis and Alicia Gray. When your big player, Elena Coates, went down, how did you reinvent this team at the very last hour in the last couple of weeks? It's belief. It's belief. Our, our players never fretted, and we miss Elena Coates so dearly. Lay, we got you a ring. We got you a ring. But Alicia Gray, Kayla Davis, they all believed in it. They saw what was happening before they got here. They spent a year getting to know our team, getting to know our system, believing in our system, and then we got, when they got the opportunity to play, we become national champions. That is incredible belief, incredible discipline, and I can't thank them enough uh, for, you, for choosing South Carolina to finish their careers. I know that your staff has been with you for a long time, going back to your Temple days and even before. I know you've been going through a lot as a staff with Nikki going through some cancer. You were there for her treatments. You have let your staff be somebody that, that she could lean on and not miss a day of work. How has this group of people, the staff behind you, stuck together in this moment? They're my family. We're, we're family. We do every single thing together. We never let Nikki go through one treatment, one treatment without us. Uh, Coach Boyer's been there from the very beginning. Coach Shamil, he left us for a little bit after Temple, but he came on back, <laughs> came on back. And it was his scout, his scout, his Mississippi State scout uh, that got us over the hump. And all the, other, and all the other coaches in our family treat, Darius Taylor, Carla McGee, all of them, all of them are, are a part of this right here because it, it takes an entire village to accomplish something like this. Speaking of village, I know your family's here in the stands, your sister, your brother. What do you think they're saying about this kid from North Philly right now? You know, my family saw all the disappointing losses in the Final Four. They saw all the dis they, they saw me miss all of uh, our family reunions. They, they think I'm the weird one, though, for real, because I put basketball ahead of a lot of things. But they've been there to support me. I'm so glad that they were here today to witness this. Witness this. Um, so I, my family, I love you guys. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get some gear for you too, some national championship gear. We gotta have it. Thank you very much. Dawn Staley with her national championship. And Noah, we'd like to announce the most outstanding player of the 2017 Women's Final Four, Asia Wilson. <laughs> Asia, you said that the game against Stanford was the hardest game you've played in your life. It was a physical battle. How did you come back from that hard game and then get all the attention you got tonight and fight through it? 
Um, I just honestly think, you know, you're playing for something. I knew that that was just the game behind me. That was the past. I really can't worry about it. Um, and I just came out with the, I was nervous. I'm not even going to run. I was nervous. But, you know, my teammates, they just kept positive thoughts in my head, and I never really let up. I knew I had to be aggressive um, coming out against Mississippi State because they were going to be aggressive, aggressive as well. So I give it all to my teammates, honestly. They helped me get through. Got a lot of talent on this team, and almost everybody's back next season. What does the future hold for this Gamecock squad? Man, just, just be with us next year. We're trying to be in the same spot next year, so we're going to see how it goes. Thank you very much. And now, here to present our 2017 Women's Basketball Championship trophy is Terry Golick, the committee chair of the basketball committee, Dr. Mark Emmert, the NCAA president, and Anuka Brown, the NCAA vice president of Division I Women's Basketball. President? Well, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'd like us all to applaud what may have been one of the best Final Fours ever. What a great round of basketball here in Dallas. It was extraordinary. But Terry and I are delighted to present the championship trophy to the 2017 national champion, South Carolina Gamecocks. <laughs> Well, terrific ceremony there, fitting that Asia has the trophy in her hand, guys, and what a performance by her. Well, the first team All-American delivered in the biggest moment, and congratulations to Dawn Staley, the first of what could be many at the level she's recruiting. I'm a sucker for storybook endings, <laughs> and you look at the full circle moment here for Dawn Staley as a coach, and you look at this team going through their adversity, losing one of their best players, and coming away national champions. That's big time. Cubs cards coming up. Baseball coming your way on ESPN2 at 8.30 Eastern. Thanks so much for being with us. The national champion is South Carolina for the first time in program history. For Holly Rowe, Doris Burke, and Kara Lawson, I'm Dave O'Brien saying good night from Dallas, Texas. Hope you enjoyed a terrific Final Four. And good night, everybody.